Hi, it's time for another verb of the day. Today's verb is duck. Let's take a look at some of the definitions or the ways that we use this verb. The first way you might hear duck used is to mean to lower one's head or body quickly in order to be hit or perhaps so as not to be seen. So the first definition really kind of involves, right, this type of action. Um, perhaps you've had to do this because something uh, has been thrown in the air, right, and you're trying to avoid having it come into contact with you. Or perhaps if you're quite tall, uh, you might enter spaces, right, where you have to kind of lower your whole body uh, in order to fit through something. Now, a second way our verb duck gets used is to mean to avoid an unwelcome or unpleasant duty. So many times when we use this, um, we're describing perhaps someone who's trying to avoid this unpleasant uh, or unwelcome activity. Uh, and so uh, we might describe them as uh, ducking um, this particular activity, which just means to avoid doing it. You should know that duck is a regular verb. To make the progressive form of this verb, all I'm going to do is add ing to form ducking. The past tense and participle forms of this verb can be made by adding ed. Now our base verb, duck, ends with an unvoiced K sound. This means that the past tense ending is going to make a T sound. So it should sound like this, duct, duct. Okay. Now there are actually a lot of phrasal verbs uh, connected to this particular one, and we're going to discuss them today. The first you might encounter is to duck down. This goes back to that first um, definition where we're talking about lowering our body. Um, uh, and here we might, again, be describing that process of lowering. Um, crouching uh, really means to, to almost kind of make ourselves compact uh, into a little ball there. And many times we're doing this to protect ourselves. So an example of this might be we ducked down in a ditch as the tornado passed. So depending on where you live, uh, maybe you've seen or encountered a tornado. Um, it's a particular type of storm uh, with high winds. Uh, it can be extraordinarily dangerous. It can be deadly. It has been. Uh, or, or I should say it's been deadly many times, different tornadoes, of course. All right. So one way uh, some people protect themselves is this they happen to be outside as one, um, is to get into a very low spot um, because uh, sort of tall things can kind of attract it. Now, a second phrasal verb you might encounter is to duck into. This means to quickly go into some place or location. An example of this might be, let's duck into the gas station and grab something to drink. So here, um, again, that idea is that it's really quick, right? We're not going to wander the aisles and look around, right? We're going to grab something, pay for it, and leave quickly. Another phrasal verb you might encounter is to duck out or duck, duck out of. This can have a couple meanings. One is to leave someplace quickly and secretly. An example of this might be, he ducked out of the office before people were asked to help clean up after the event. Right? So here, maybe I'm describing somebody who knew, right, I'm going to be asked to do this, right, and we're back to that unpleasant activity. So they're trying to get away quickly uh, before being asked. A second way you hear duck out of, uh, again, goes back to that idea of avoiding a particular activity. An example of this might be, do not duck out of your chores again today. Right? Be something a parent says to a child, right? Have those kind of like household responsibilities, right? You can't avoid doing them is what that, that sentence is conveying. The last way uh, or last phrasal verb we're going to discuss is to duck 
under. And again, we're back to that original definition of moving our head or moving our, our body downwards. Um, again, it might be to avoid being hit or having something come into contact with us, or it could be to avoid being seen. An example of this might be, you'll duck under the door to get to the attic, right? So um, perhaps we're describing a, a really small space and a lot of houses kind of that top part um, that's used for storage many times. It's called an attic. Um, and the points at which you can enter it kind of tend to be small. So uh, again, this is never an issue for me because I'm quite short, but uh, for others, they might need to lower their head or body in order to navigate into a particular place. Now, let's use our verb of the day in a couple different tenses. Today, we're going to practice the imperative and the simple future with will. We'll start with the imperative first. We use this verb tense to give a command to either one person or two or more people. So we're telling someone to do or not do a particular action. There are no questions in the imperative. You might think of um, these sentences as being commands. So this is different than advice where I'm telling someone it is a good idea to do a particular action. Instead, I'm just telling them to do it. When my students and I talk about this uh, topic in class, many times uh, people have an easier time understanding if we connect to maybe like how parents sometimes speak to their ch children, right? You just want them to do something. You're not asking them, <laughs> you're telling them to do it. Uh, and then sometimes in classrooms, right? Teachers or professors to their students may also give commands or use the imperative. And what's special about the imperative is that we can begin our sentence with the verb. Okay? We don't have a subject. And the, the reason for that is the subject is implied. It means it's, it's generally understood. It's you, whether that's one or more people, whomever I happen to be speaking to, or maybe I'm writing to another person and telling them or giving them a specific action to do. So an example of an affirmative imperative with our verb of the day might just be an, an exclamation, duck, right? You might hear somebody hear that, right? And so they're wanting you to lower yourself down. And uh, I thought to give us a little more context, uh, maybe to explain, they're throwing water balloons at us, right? So to avoid being hit, right? We want to kind of lower our bodies. Now, if I want to make a negative imperative sentence, I can begin with do not and then the base verb. You might also hear the contraction don't, which is used in my, exam uh, in my example sentence here, don't duck your responsibilities. Okay? It's back to that meaning of avoid. Okay. Now, some of my students have mentioned in the past that it could feel a little awkward or even maybe rude to tell someone to do a particular action. So you can always soften an imperative or make it a bit more polite by using the word please. You can put please at the beginning of a sentence or please at the end, affirmative or negative, um, but you don't need it in both places. One please is just fine. Now let's move on and talk about the simple future. Today we're going to make sentences using with a uh, will. And uh, will is commonly used as people make predictions, right? That kind of guesses about what's going to happen in the future. You might also hear it uh, as people make promises or offers. Uh, occasionally we'll hear it with plans, a little less common, but, but it does happen. The nice thing about making sentences in the simple future with will is that I can have my subject, I can use will, and then the base verb. And that structure is going to stay the same. It will not change, even though the subject might change. An example of this might be, this candidate will duck the party debates. Okay? So they're going to avoid it. They're not going to participate in it. Uh, again, this uh, might be a, a prediction. If I want to make a negative 
simple future sentence. I'm going to use my subject. I'll use will not and then the base verb. You might also hear the contraction won't. That's used in my example here. I won't duck tough questions. So here we're still using that avoid uh, meaning. I've had uh, different leaders uh, say things like this, right? When we get a, a new CEO um, or new president of an organization, sometimes they make this promise, right? You can ask me hard questions. I'm not going to avoid them. I'm going to answer you. Finally, let's talk about making a yes or no question in the simple future. To do this, I start with will, then I have my subject, then the base verb. An example of this might be, will they duck out before paying? Are they going to try and leave secretly and quickly um, before the check comes? Uh, maybe you know someone uh, who behaves like that. Okay, Just an example sentence, but hopefully not. Now let's move on and talk about some words that are related to our uh, verb duck. And the first word we're going to discuss today is the noun form of this word. Same spelling same pronunciation. And many times when he, people hear the word duck, they think of a particular animal, a type of water bird uh, that has a bill, right? Short legs and webbed feet, right? So I've got an example down here. Uh, maybe you've seen these. You might he have a friend or someone who says, let's watch the ducks swimming in the lake. Right? It can be kind of relaxing. I watched them this weekend and Hmm, it's just serene being out in nature. Now, another way the noun duck gets used is to describe meat from that particular animal. An example of this, what side dishes are good to serve with duck? This is not something I, uh, I'm not sure if I've ever cooked uh, duck. Um, and some, I, I don't eat a lot of meat, though. I, I should mention that. That could be one reason why. Um, but it's more common in some cultures than others to eat this. Um, if you've eaten any duck, I would love for you to make a comment and share with us. Uh, maybe you you know some side good di side dish good side dishes or good ways to prepare it. We can all learn from you. Another <clears throat> related word we're going to talk about um, is the noun lucky duck. Maybe you've heard people uh, get called this, but it really just means someone who has had incredibly good luck or good fortune. An example of that in a sentence might be, that lucky duck won the drawing for a new car, right? That would be someone with great fortune to maybe win a brand new car. We're going to talk about one phrase um, that you might encounter. Actually, it's kind of two variations of the phrase. It's to have one's ducks in a row or to get one's ducks in a row. Both of these are going to be connected to the idea of being or getting completely prepared for something. An example of this in a sentence might be, do we have our ducks in a row for tomorrow's event? Okay. So. Perhaps if I'm speaking to a group of people, a team in some way, right, I'm asking, are we completely prepared for this? I thank you uh, for watching today's video, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.